it wasn't jealousy, yeah. obviously, because if it was jealousy, I would just stop gymnastics. But it was anger at myself. Right. Why? Yeah. Why can't I do it? So, and obviously every day Such I come point. home with tears. I'm like, ah, you yeah. know, angry, why I can't do? And my family, my mom said, mm -hmm. stop, stop gymnastics if it hurts you so badly. Like, why are you doing, why are you continue? Right. I'm like, shut up, don't say a <laughs> word, don't say. Probably I wanted to hear something, like yeah. somebody will tell me, stop, that's not work. And yeah. I, I figure out like, oh my God, I'm crazy. No way to look on it to stop. Yeah, so I back to the gym mm -hmm. and I keep practicing and I made the decision. 13 years old, it's young, you know, and I remember I made the decision, okay, what you decide? You have two ways to stop mm -hmm. or to just push yeah. and just learn and be better. Let me introduce you to my friend, Oksana Grishina. Oksana is a superhuman of a person. I mean, there's nothing that this woman cannot do. We all know her as five-time Miss Fitness Olympia, but what many people don't know is some of the things that I learned in my interview with her today, and I cannot wait for you to hear it. From starting as a very competitive gymnastics at the age of seven in Russia, her family sacrificing so much for her to be able to compete and succeed and excel in rhythmic gymnastics, running a ballet company out of college. She went on to compete in America's Got Talent. She started pole fitness. Tell her that she cannot do something and she will prove to you that she can. I cannot wait for you to hear this story. This is Oksana Grishina and this is how Oksana is making her mark. Hello, Oksana. You have an incredible story. I must say, I, I did my research on you. I've known you for a while. I've never really had a chance to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, so I'm really excited about this. But one thing that I really wanna talk about today is your story is a story of sacrifice. Is that? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that word rings a bell for you, doesn't it? Yes, oh my God. Um... Let's start from the beginning, because I know there was a lot of sacrifice for you early on, and then you're entering some new years where you're gonna be sacrificing a lot for your new one coming. Yes. So let's backtrack to the sacrifice. Yeah. yeah, my sport career is incredible and at the same time crazy. So like, of course it's hard to explain for people, like if you wanna have amazing sport career or any career, you got to be a little bit crazy by yourself <laughs> and that's normal you know and you have your life is going to be crazy also your situation you have to be ready to sacrifice a lot in your life if that's really what you want mm -hmm. you know in your life it's uh, i don't know business career or sport career anything let's talk about back when you so you your father uh -huh. right he sacrificed some things for you to be able to do gymnastics. Let's yes. start with the beginning of your gymnastics career. Yeah, and At I think, seven years old, by the way, which was old for a gymnast, but <laughs> in the U.S., that's not old for a gymnast. So let's yes. backtrack and to you at seven. My, my dad actually was probably the best um, example for me. Yeah. What, what it is sacrifice. Like, why you sacrifice for this little girl? Doesn't it, Come on. It's, she's just a baby. But uh, I started gymnastics, like you said, when I was seven years old. And yes, it was late for gymnastics. That's crazy. Uh, living in Russia. And actually, we used to live in uh, Latvia. Okay. So Latvia. What's a normal age for gymnasts to start in Russia? Four. Three, four. Four Three, four, four years. Four years old. <laughs> four four <o> yeah. <laughs> yes, three, four years old. And I start my gymnastics in Latvia. Okay. Uh, so, and there was great school. And uh, they bring me when I was seven years old and I pick up things so fast. Mm -hmm. So they said, oh my God, she is great. So we used to live five years in Latvia. Okay. And then my father was transferred to Russia, back to Russia. And uh, obviously they said, uh, Oksana, so you coming with us, we're gonna find some gymnastic school there. And the city where he was transferred, there was no gymnastics. No at all. So your father was going to transfer somewhere. And yeah, because he was military and he was, we travel a lot. And you were doing gymnastics and they were like, 
Oksana, do you want to come with us or do you want to stay here and do gymnastics? Yes, yes. And what did you say? I said, I'm going to stay <laughs> here. I'm going to, there's no question. No course, question. They were surprised. They're like, and you were what? 10 years old? Yes. yes and so you're 10 years time. old. You're mm -hmm. deciding between staying and doing gymnastics yes. or going with your parents when your dad had to. Yes. So that's when your parents knew that you were serious about this. Yeah, that's when my parents knew better to not ask. <laughs> Ask. <laughs> no, they actually they were thinking about it because yeah. I was so good at gymnastics, mm -hmm. and my coach she was like second mom to me, and she said she's gonna be in Olympics team. Mm -hmm. She can be in Olympics team of Latvia mm -hmm. because she is really good and like she's picking up things so fast and yeah. learning fast. And I felt it even when I was a kid, but I felt yeah. it. And uh, but of course. My dad and mom was kind of like surprised and they said maybe she doesn't really understand what she's talking about. <laughs> um, and Looking so, back, did you? Yes. You and totally understand. they found the city, like it's Kaliningrad city where mm -hmm. I was born. Uh, there was two places. Okay. One city where my dad would get a uh, apartment, mm -hmm. like what it said, place to live right. uh, with no problem, but there is no gymnastics. And Kaliningrad city mm -hmm. where I was born, he couldn't get place to live for 20 years. Wow. So 20 years we have to wait, but there is gymnastics. So, and he decided to go to Kaliningrad. So you're moving like from apartment to apartment so that you can do yes. gymnastics. Yes, all 12 years we were moving from one place to another place. It was, how to say, now I'm looking back, it was nightmare. It's so hard, wow. especially for my parents to moving around with two kids and there is no apartment system like in the United States, right. you know, there is like you just pay cash and uh, the owner oh can gosh. kick you out anytime. It doesn't matter what reason. But so, this is because everyone knew that there was something special about you. Uh, there was something special about you. There was a lot of sacrifice for you to pursue your it, gymnastics. Uh, yes, yes. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I'm very thankful to my dad yeah. for this choice. I know it, it was difficult for them, mm -hmm. mostly for them, not for kids. Kids usually not yeah. really realize things. Until but later. They, yes, they see dif uh, difficult times. But my family, my dad and mom, they never showed to kids that something wrong or right. something really stressful. They like always keep things positive. Yeah. So, and that's also what I learned from them. You know, yeah. and um, yeah, that's how I started gymnastics in Kaliningrad. And do you uh, think your your passion for gymnastics and your passion for what you were doing genuinely brought your parents joy? And you know, that was the reward that they needed to feel like sacrificing for you was worth it. I think it's more about um, uh, about me being a good person yeah like it's not about how good i'm at gymnastics yeah. or how they just see how right i am yeah how um i don't how know focused. yes You're like focused. i think for any parents it's good to see when kid doing right thing and yeah. not you're going. committed to something yes. and you're consistent yeah. and they see that there's something that you are are just so focused on and, yeah. and it keeps you on a good path I yes, think. yes. And, yeah. you know, when you're in school, I'm talking about, I know in Russia schools and uh, United yeah. States, it's a little bit different stories. So when you're in Russia, I remember like, I'm sure in the United States too, yeah. kids starting smoking, drinking, yeah. some parties, right? Yep. I don't know how here. Yes. But Okay, yeah. yeah, and that's what I'm not interested in. I'm not belong right. there. I I want to, I want to try, but yeah. I was always alien in school. Yeah. Like always, like I'm skinny, or skinny in normal way. Yeah, yeah, For yeah. gymnastics, I was always fat. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> because of muscles. Like muscles. The, yeah, yeah that's what they looked at like It's kind of that. like for gymnastics, you fat, you always should follow your diet. Yeah. For normal people, like they always, uh, you know, like making fun of you. Oh my God, you're so skinny. You have just your yeah. knee and that's yeah. it. Yeah. You know, so, and that was difficult for me to be yeah. around my schoolmates because we live different lives. Absolutely. We have nothing in, in common. Yeah. Nothing. They have their... Th their, yeah. um, how to say, 
their idea of fun is yes. is like partying and drinking and yes. all that kind of stuff. Yes. Yes. But you just innate you you inside without any you know influence or anything you just already knew yeah i believe that there are people who just have that that special thing within them you're you know and you see this in the world you know there are people that they go on their own path and mm -hmm. regardless of what influences there are they are so secure in knowing that they're on the right track mm -hmm. and it's this doesn't happen by accident. Where you are now and what all you've accomplished, I this think is not so. an accident. Yes, and I was thinking about it. Why is why it's like this? Why some some girls like want to go party? And it's normal, right? Mm -hmm. It's the age where girls want to try something, you know. And in my case, like I'm so focused mm -hmm. and so patient, passion for gymnastics mm -hmm. for results. Uh, I don't know. Maybe something wrong with me. I was thinking about it, and but then I'm like, why should I think about all these stereotypes? Like stereotypes in, let's say, in 14 years old, right? You should try some, yeah, something, you know. I think it's in you, but I also think that even though seven years old may seem old in Russia for starting gymnastics, I think any kid who starts something at seven that they find some success in, mm -hmm. if you find that a little bit of success at an early age, I think it wires you differently. And I think that would be the case if, if, there were, if anybody starts something that early in life. And for you, you found something so early that you were good at and mm -hmm. that feedback loop kept you wanting more results. And I think that starting gymnastics for every kid at a young age is good. It's such a great yes. thing to start, you yes. know, balance and coordination and discipline that you learn. Yes, and the more they will try, mm -hmm. the, the better idea you will get what your kid like yeah. the most. Because uh, it's good when they try different things, yeah. you know. So maybe music, maybe something and just see where yeah. your kids belong what your kids like the most. So were you <clears throat> motivated just so much that you didn't need any outside motivation or were your parents, were your parents hard on you? Were they? No, no. My parents no. gave me the whole, the whole freedom. And that's what I'm thankful. Because you were enough. Yes. <laughs> and uh, they let me to choose. They let me to decide. Mm -hmm. uh, especially I had my uh, young sister. She was six, she's six years younger than I am. So... I was like, uh, you know, I kind of was like, they put attention on her. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I could focus on my gymnastics, you know, mm -hmm. I, I could just do my thing. Yes, I was totally free kid, free kid. So you're motivated so much that your parents are like, she's good. She doesn't need any more motivation anymore. Because some people have parents that really push them. And then they... My parents wanted to stop me because... They you know, wanted to stop you. They wanted you. to stop, yeah. So I'll explain. I don't know if I, w I could explain in English or not. So first thing you got motivated, right? Mm -hmm. From what? From that you can do something and mm -hmm. you can do good, right? Like in gymnastics, some like, let's say work out and you do elements better than some other girls. You're like, oh my God, I can do yep. this well. Then another step, another step when you can do mm -hmm. and somebody do better than you. And what your kids gonna do in this case, what your kids is deciding, stop doing gymnastics. Like, okay, I'm enough. That's what most kids and people do they stop they yeah. give up or this kid is like getting motivated mm -hmm. from that he can't yeah. he can do and that when it, it happens with me when I was 12 yeah uh, 13 years old I can't and I what got couldn't you do some movements, some movements. Uh, especially like uh, things like diet with my body. I was okay. look different and obviously it doesn't let me to do some great movements like other girls does. Mm -hmm. It's not, it wasn't jealousy, yeah. obviously, because if it was jealousy, I would just stop gymnastics. But it was anger at myself. Right. Why? Yeah. Why can't I do it? So, and obviously every day Such I come point. home with tears. I'm like, ah, you yeah. know, angry. Why I can't do and my family, my mom said, mm. stop, stop gymnastics if it hurts you so badly. Like, why are you doing, why are you continuing? Right. I'm like, shut up, don't say a <laughs> word, don't say. That's where, you know, yeah. I was probably, I wanted to hear something like yeah. somebody will tell me stop. 
that's not work. And yeah. I, I figure out like, oh my God, I'm crazy. No way to look on it to stop. Yeah. So I back to the gym mm -hmm. and I keep practicing and I made the decision. 13 years old, it's young, mm -hmm. you know, and I remember I made the decision. I was talking with myself. Okay, what you decide? You have two ways to stop mm -hmm. or to just push yeah. and just learn and be better. And you can do it, you know, without any emotionals. And, and this is you talking to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's what happens. Wow. And uh, 14 years old, I got my higher master degree in gymnastics. Wow. So it was one year when I was focusing on myself. Yeah. And like I see the coaches, you know, of course, they have their favorite girls who are skinny, mm -hmm. you know, like with good genetics. And when they see my result, they like, oh, let's yeah. jump into her. Yeah. I, my, char my character, my temper is very difficult. I know. It's like, you know what? I can do everything on my own. I train myself, you know. So, and that's what I never will forget to my uh, coaches. Mm -hmm. When they give up on me, mm. you know, and then they start to back up. Mm -hmm. And I got my master of degree without any support, just myself yeah. first first from my group. I want to talk more about your coaches giving up on you, but I want to point something out that I think is really a, a really important point, which is the difference between jealousy and then having letting something fuel you, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think that you really said that well, which is there is jealousy when you're you let your energy of being envious of somebody take over. And I think that is crippling. I think that keeps people from moving forward. I think that keeps yes. people from having success. But yes. you saw people that could do things that you couldn't do and you were not jealous. You were not envious. You wanted it. And yes. you wanted to do whatever it took to get that. Yeah. You, uh, uh, I found in myself more like you're inspired by yes, person, you're inspired. by your friend, yeah. by your friend who does something really good. Mm -hmm. And you want to know how you do it, like yep. why you're trying to, uh, you know, do the same, like you're trying to repeat this yeah. workout or mm -hmm. like stretching, even if genetics is different, mm -hmm. you know, and stretching is different. Some girls flexible, some right. girls not so flexible. So, but you still trying and you finding your way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, you're right. So you, f you felt like some of your coaches were not giving you attention until mm -hmm. they saw your results. So tell me a little bit more about that. Um, you know, I'm glad that being so young, mm -hmm. I've seen these things, yes. you know, I've seen, I know how my coaches, like, uh, they was uh, never take me to the competition mm -hmm. just because of my look and because just some girls is more skinnier and that's, I couldn't understand. And I was very upset, yeah. very upset because can you imagine 14 years, 14 girls and let's say, 10 girls they took to the competition and four girls staying at home. And you were one of the four and girls. And that's heartbreaking, uh, you yeah. know. And I remember once I, I just, I wanted to believe it. I wanted to believe it once I came to my mom, to her job, to mm -hmm. her work. And I was just talking to her and it wasn't that I'm lying. It was just, I wanted to believe it. I said, mom, you can't believe. She said, what? They took me to the competition. <gasps> She said, wow, really? Yeah, yeah, oh. Yes, yes. And she's like, oh my God, Oksana, you need money. We need to find our own money for the, like, no, for the trip, you know. Oh, we don't have anything. Okay, let me ask someone. Wow, this is so great. And I, when I was in school, I was dreaming about it. And I wrote um, even paper from the coach, like she is, la, 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 la. And I gave her, she's like, oh my God. Yeah, that's how I wanted. I was a kid. Yeah. So she went to get some money for the trip for her daughter, you oh know, because she was also, also so excited. Oh and when I was look at her, how she believed in it, I was like, ah, oh. you know, I felt like you almost got the satisfaction yes, like it did I was happen. Like, wow. You know, I, I believed in it. It's truth. For me, it was the truth. You, you deserve know? to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and so she went to ask for yeah. money. And while, while I was waiting for her, I was like, boom, boom, boom. And I fell asleep. 
So she came back and she's like, Oksana, here is the money. I'm like, why? Why this money? She's like, for, the, for your trip, for the competition. I said, Mama, oh. I, was, <laughs> I was playing with you. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh my like, god. This is true. This is story. funny, but it's making me cry yeah. at the same time. This is true story. Oh my gosh. And she's like, um, oh my god, Taksana Chika. This is making me emotional. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> yes, and I just telling her uh, that that's how I want it. Yeah. I want it so badly. Oh, I remember my gosh. it. Yes. And you know, so and like I I decide what can I do. Yeah. I just should get better. I just should find the hardest way is yeah. just work out on my own. Don't expect that your coach will get your attention. Yeah. Don't expect. Yeah. Do your thing yeah. by yourself. You know, I, I thought, I know how to get better. Yeah. I know, just trust yourself. Yeah. So and when I got better, they got, I got their attention, you know. Okay. And they start to train me. They start to pay attention. They start okay. to, um, you know, when coach is angry at you, mm -hmm. like arguing or saying something, that's the best compliment right, for, right. The, for the athlete. So you're because jealous of when the coach noticed is... It. You, you noticed it. Wow. You know? Yeah. And uh, yes, it was pleasure, but I was already grow, growing here. Yes. I, I've, I've seen this all. Yes, it was really nice. And they took me to the competition, one, yeah. another one, and I compete well. And I was the first from our group of genetics, super genetics girls who got master of sport degree. Well, look at that. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. coaches, tell me about the coach that chose those girls. Then fast forward to the first time that that coach noticed you. Okay. Tell me how that felt. Uh, for me, yes. For me, it was like that's it, like ultimate. It was a word. Yeah. Like this is a word. Yeah. You know, I got their attention, but at the same time, I also hate them. You know, yeah. like, you hate them because, wow, really? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you don't see. You know, I think it's yeah. problem for many, um, especially coaches yeah. in Russia because they selected the girls by genetics only. Mm -hmm. So because genetics girls may bring results, right. but they also forgot about some who don't have yeah. really good genetics, but they athletes inside, they're very strong. Yeah. And you know, talent, it's nothing. Any desire can yeah. beat any talent. So, so mm -hmm. how old were you at this time? 13, 14? Uh, 14, I got my master of sports degree. Okay, so you're so 14. 12, 13, it was difficult years for me. So at 14 years old, what genetically were you lacking? Uh, like compared to the girls that you would say were more genetically gifted than you? Uh, all these girls stopped with gymnastics. Yeah. They all stopped. They hated coaches because they took so much attention on them. Mm -hmm. I, I just, uh, I saw girls after gymnastics and I was spoke how you feel. Oh, I hate it. This is my worst time in life. I'm like, oh my God, can't you see? Like, I'm still doing sport. Yeah. I'm still doing sport. Yeah. And these girls not appreciate a single word that uh, coaches, single time that coaches gave them. Yeah. This, is, this is the best, like yeah. when coach really talking to you, helping you. This mm -hmm. is amazing. And you see, they're not appreciated. So why yeah. you, why you like... Uh, Maybe you know? an advantage of starting a little bit later is here you are now still winning Olympia yeah. titles, right? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, yeah, this is just, you know, it's all uh, about building, um, building iron power yeah. inside of you, not just power. You're building Iron your character. Power. Yeah. Yes, it's like you. Nothing can stop you. Oh gosh, and, that's so good. Uh, n n n no difficult times yeah. or situation. Just nothing can stop you. Mm -hmm. And that's probably um, champion mindset. I don't yeah. know. Champion mindset. I'm not talking to win. Champion mindset. Like you know that you right. are the champion. And. Uh, you knew you at such a young age, even though there was doubt. I mean, it sounds like your parents really believed in you because they saw yes. that you believed so much in yourself. It's not like they believe they just not on my way. Right. You know, yeah, sometimes yeah. parents, oh, how much they like to be on yeah. the way of kids' uh, passion 
Okay, it's uh, whether it's discouraging them or pushing them too hard. Yes, and they just were out of your way, yeah. letting you just stay on your focused yes. road. Yeah. yeah, and my parents they never was on my way, and that's huge plus. Yeah. So I did what I wanted, and they still supported yeah. me. And my dad wasn't wasn't believe like. Uh, Another Olympia, another Olympia. Let's, I'm like, Dad, come on, I'm 45. <laughs> They're like, come on, you got more in you. Yes. Uh, he's oh, so fun. We're going to talk about that, but, but something that really fascinated me, and I want to know more about this, but you, when you started college, you started a ballet. Tell uh, me about that. Your ballet that you started? Uh, uh, it was gymnastics. Gymnastics. It was gymnastics. But in rhythmic gymnastics, we had classes inside. Okay. So there was ballet. Okay. It's, it's uh, mandatory. Right. So it's ballet classes. Got it. And, uh, of course, then stretching and gymnastics actual workouts. Right. So this ballet was on very high level. We had amazing teacher yeah. who, was, who was dancing in ballet. So that's why any gymnastics... Russian gymnastics. <laughs> if you talk to her, she can do even sometimes more than some ballet dancers does. You know, it's yeah. just. Uh, I would guess that you were a ballet dancer based off of the routines I've seen you do on stage. You're you have a perfect technique. You look like, and you've even done routines on point. Yes. So you yes. didn't. You weren't technically a ballet dancer, but you could still dance on point. Yes. If you rhythmic gymnast, Russian rhythmic gymnast, you can do anything, anything in on, ballet. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So did you actually run the company, the ballet company, when you were in college? No, or no, Or you taught no, no. in the company? Uh, we had ballet. Ballet, uh, we opened ballet for everyone. Like, okay. And we present our show at, uh, at some events. Got it. At the college, you know. So it was, that's how we started to dance in our group Got and it. make some money also, you know, yeah. like... Uh, yeah. People would like to see the performances. Yes, yes. It was interesting performances. I still should have something on type on tape. I don't know. Ooh. I need to find it. Oh, yeah. yeah but we need it, to find was that. Really, it was really beautiful, amazing. So I kind of like, I love to create, create yeah. some performances, not just for one girl, but for the group. Yeah. That's my passion. I, I love. That's probably why I'm promoter now. I don't know, because I love, you to, love to build see the, the show. Whole, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a very wide range. You, your skill set, you took your skill set to ballet, you took it to rhythmic gymnastics, to gymnastics, to all sorts of styles of dance. One thing that I do know is, um, and a lot of people know you for this, is your uh, introduction to pole dancing at some of the events. Yes. So, so tell me how that came to be. How did you, uh, how did you start doing pole dancing and yes. how did you integrate that into the bodybuilding world? I noticed pole dancing was very popular, I think in 2013 or 12 or 14. Yeah. I was like, wow. But, uh, when it was popular in sport way, like right. not in striptease way, but the girls start doing some crazy stuff yeah. on the pole. I'm like, oh my God, this is sport. This yeah. is amazing. This is difficult. And then when I uh, realized I want to try this performance, yeah. there wasn't uh, in fitness, there was rules when you can still bring some tools, some um, mm, tools. Right. Yeah. So, and I decided, I asked, they said, yes, okay, mm -hmm. you can. For Arnold Classic, yeah. you, yes, you can. I'm like, nice. Yeah. I was absolutely sure I will jump to the pool and do everything. You know, I jumped to the pool and I could do a, like nothing. Zero. Really? It was so difficult. So I, another thing that you had to learn. Yes, yeah. I got so frustrated again. That's my temper. Yeah. So I, oh my God. I started to hire some coaches, girls, yeah. just please help me how to do it, you know. And it wasn't enough time because uh, there was like six months before the Arnold, mm -hmm. you know. And honestly, it wasn't enough time because yeah. I get better on the pool after the Arnold right. and some good stuff. So for Arnold, I was just did some basic things, mm -hmm. but it was difficult for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's hard. I got in love in pool after performing at the Arnold and yeah. actually I got... For the first time, I won Arnold yeah. in 2014 with this routine, pole fitness routine. And I uh, want to ask you about that. Okay, he, did you? Because people do associate pole with, you know, the erotic yeah, kind of striptease yes. type of stuff. But you are very artistic and athletic. 
Did you get any backlash on that? Did you have anyone make co mad, mean comments? Like, and how did you deal with that? Uh, you mean like a judgment? What? Yeah. Or, uh, actually, in fitness, every, like in our audience, yeah. in uh, bodybuilding fitness, everybody loves it because there was nothing sexy. I mean, yeah, it's sexy, <laughs> but you know, when it's body, athletic. when body is super lean and yeah. uh, muscular, like, like muscular, uh, it looks different. Yeah. You know, it looks mm -hmm. difficult. Yeah. And uh, I was trying to be sexy. Yes, I add some move, to, you know, in, <laughs> into, into my routine just to make it more yeah. uh, sexy. Yes, but nobody noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People not notice it because you lean. People just think, oh my God, the shoulders, abs, yeah. you know, how yeah. they said, legs. Yeah. Ah, ah. Yeah. So, and, uh, but... Uh, the pole fitness world, pole fitness audience, they notice how cool it is. Yeah. They said, oh my God, this is amazing when body in shape. Because in pole fitness world, there's no rules on being in shape. Right. You know, so anyone in any shape can do it, which right. is great. Right. But it looks absolutely on different level when yeah. you're in shape. And that's how I start to communicate and talk with uh, uh, Expo. Yeah, uh, owner, and we decide to do. We try decide to try pole fitness. Yeah, and ch and we change rules a little bit with uh, with body round. Like it's not like in fitness, just right. to see that girl in shape. Yeah. you know, not overweight or something, yeah. just in shape. And it's bring pole fitness. Like oh my god, yeah, it's got so much interested in it because girls does way better tricks than I do. Yeah. It's insane tricks. I still yeah. don't know how they do it. And they incredible shape. And I promote yeah. pole fitness at the Olympia for the first time ever mm. in 2000, after I retired yeah. in 2018 and 19. And it was wow. amazing competitors, absolutely worldwide. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I mean, I think that you're such a positive force. I mean, you're beloved. Everybody loves you. <laughs> but at the same time, I just wonder, have you have you ever experienced any negativity? And has anyone have you ever and how do you have you ever had to deal with that? Uh, or are you like just somebody who just I, has never listen, if you, you don't have, have some judgment people or yeah. some critic people who hate you for your nose yeah. or for something. Yeah. Just, just just because, you know. This is your biggest fan. Mm -hmm. And these people who follow, like who f they follow every step of you. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. And we should appreciate it. We should love them for this. <laughs> yes, give me more. Give me more. I exp and I, love to, I always love to explain. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Let's talk. If person is not logic, like yeah. not logical, I mean, something yeah. weird yes you can see not nothing you can yeah. do but again it's your fan yeah it's your biggest fan right you, you can't ignore him because he's follow you he hate you for something yeah. you're doing you know, which but which leads me to my next question is a really uh -huh. good segue into like there was a lot of talk about you after the 2018 season that uh -huh. was your last well that was when you retired 17 17 okay 17 was last 17 was last you retire <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. a lot of people are talking about you still, you know, is Oksana going to come back? Like what's going to happen with Oksana? You're still like in the talks. I mean, for me, you know, talking about the sport and doing a lot of commentary and things like that. And we were always talking about you, like, we need to see Oksana. We're missing Oksana, right? <laughs> Tell me what went into that process between 2017 and then what year did you make your comeback? Uh, it 2020 was, COVID. I remember. COVID year. Yes, yes, I remember the COVID year. Our S best year. I know, <laughs> right? <year>. Seriously. <laughs> so, what went into your comeback? Was that fueled 100% by just you? Did you have any outside influence on that? Uh, first of all, I never stopped working out. I think maybe mentally I would need a break. I yeah. don't know. Probably I didn't feel it. I didn't pronounce it but probably now I can tell maybe yeah. mentally I, I, I needed some break and just to have this uh, freedom to create something yeah. more yeah and that's when I start to promote pole fitness at the Olympia it's yes. 2018 19 yeah but yes I know the fans like Oksana where yeah, where's I'm like come on guys uh, and some 
some uh, fans, they still didn't know that I didn't compete at the Olympia. Guys, I'm not at the Olympia for <laughs> second year. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and they still, they still believed in me. And of course, this their belief, and uh, it's kind of like, and I'm in shape, I'm getting better with elements, yeah. you know, I start to learn something, it's fun. It's not like I'm doing something for purpose. I just live my best yeah. life, you know. If my body wants to work out, if my body wants to learn something new, mm. I do it, and it works, you know. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know, it was just, I don't know how to explain, but then, uh, if you remember, there's supposed to be show, rock show. Yeah. And uh, so, and obviously the organizer, they start, start to, to mm -hmm. reach uh, champs if they want to compete. Mm -hmm. And I said, mm, I was like thinking about it. Yes, why not? You know, I'm like, this is new show I want to support. And especially Olympia is close. Yeah. Olympia was close with a uh, rock show. Yeah. And I said, yes. I said, yes. When I said yes, that means yes. Even if show not happens, mm -hmm. I said already yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I said to fans that I'm coming back, to everyone. When so you I'm, say yes, you mean yes. Yes. I'm going to keep my promise. And that's... Uh, how I come back. That's awesome. Came back. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're, you know, you're going from the 2017 to the 2020. We have it's like two careers. We have I feel like two careers. There's like you literally, I mean, because yeah, we start a whole new uh, chapter for Oksana. Okay. As positive as you are, was there, was there like a moment in that period of time where you just really missed it? You just, I mean, it seems like a gradual progression where you just kind of people are like, you should do it. And you're just kind of like, okay, you know, but was there a moment where you're just sitting at home and you're thinking about it and you just kind of just felt like, oh my gosh, I really miss this. Um... I miss training, mm -hmm. training, and not just training like you're training for yourself, right. but training when training you for some event. when you focus on improvements, improvements mm -hmm. on learning something more, more new. And when you learn something like, let's say, windmill, I got this windmill, yeah. right? I was the happiest girl in the world. Yeah, that's I won already. <laughs> I already won. You know, <laughs> when you got like, let's say you got backflip, double yeah. backflip. Yeah. You're like, oh my god, life One. is perfect. Yeah. Yes, and that's what I was missing. Yeah, these feelings of training, and obviously I was missing to communicate with audience. That's yeah. my best part. I absolutely love to perform, and it's always telling some stories and it's always like for me it's an art process absolutely when you came back in 2020 did it was it the comeback that you that you wanted did you feel satisfied or did you feel oh you mean uh, 2020 yeah who that tell was me. difficult tell year. me about it oh my god so there was the year when um, I spoke with uh, Olympia organizers mm -hmm. and I said listen I have I have great performance with uh, Lyra, yeah. like I was practicing Lyra, great performance, and I can do it if you allow me to. Yeah. They said, yes, do it. And all these months I was working on yeah. it. And then four, month, four weeks before, yeah. I came to Las Vegas just to see the venue. Remember, there was supposed to be in Vegas. Yeah. I came to Las Vegas to see the venue, and we check with my rigging system. Everything is good, safe, all good. Yeah. We're like, be good to go, you know. And then something happens, remember, and they switch venue to yeah, Florida. And Florida. in Florida, it's a total different story, and they couldn't put this uh, rigging system on the, on the top. I'm like, they said, Oksana, I'm sorry, you can't do this routine. I'm like, what? No. Four weeks, I'm ready, you God, know, four weeks yeah. before the show. You ready, ready. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh and we gosh. start to spoke with Boris, with my husband. I said, and that Boris, it was first year when I yeah. came back, what to do? He said, 
I know you can do something. He just, I know you, you will figure it out. You just I'm give like, me chills. Yeah, I'm like, yes, I know it too. <laughs> okay, give me one day, two day. Okay. I was thinking, and then I found out yeah. um, this idea to become a uh, transformer on stage. Boom, boom. I loved it. It was actually good, it was right? Good. It was good. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> yeah. So it was so spontaneous, uh, so fast. I have to find costume. I have to make this costume fit to me because, gosh, it was so funny. On stage, it, it's look, guys, it was looks great. Yes, but backstage, <laughs> I look like standing there kid, you know, when you so small, this bubble, bubble costume. Oh my God. I, my husband, it, Boris, he was laughing at me. It just gym. has to look good on stage. <laughs> Yeah, so um, nobody noticed how funny it was looks <laughs> in real life, <laughs> but on stage, yes. So yeah. and yeah, I was so happy with this routine. I was so happy with this challenge I took in, um, and uh, I got second place. Mm -hmm. And I was absolutely, I was absolutely happy. You know, this yeah. is my return. I didn't know what to expect. I know there is a lot of good girls, new girls. Yes, uh, but there's just this prop, you know, it was a little bit frustrated because I saw backstage this year and there was huge props for other girls, like yeah. props, prop, 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 <laughs> the house, the, the chair, boom, boom. It's getting I'm out like, of control. Oh my God, and I have no, <laughs> I have nothing. So, but yeah, it was, uh, it was great, great year, yeah. great, great comeback. I think it was yeah. great comeback. How do you how do you deal with that mentally when you're looking around and you're seeing what everyone else has going on? Does that does that affect you or shake you or throw off your focus a little bit? It was different a little yeah. bit when I finished uh, competing in 2017. It yeah. was different because a lot of girls left, like Rayal, mm -hmm. um, uh, Regina De Silva, mm -hmm. and all this company of absolutely amazing, positive girls. Yeah. I miss them so much, yeah. really. Uh, when I came back, uh, it's different girls, yeah. a different um, uh, aura, yeah, energy yeah, yeah. inside. Yeah. You know, I was, um, but it, you know, it's different. You yeah. just can't say that. But something really changed a little bit. Yeah. yeah. There was no this craziness. You remember you competed yeah. with fitness, right? Yeah. It, it's always something insane, fun. Like there's, yeah. yes, we compete against each other, but we always support each other. Yeah. We always making fun of each other. I know. Like, and it was amazing. I don't know. I mm -hmm. think fitness, the fitness world has gotten really intense. And I think more intense than a lot of the other divisions because you put so much into these routines. And I know that like now that the rules have changed, you have to win a pro show. Mm -hmm. There are so few shows and it's so competitive. And I think that that, it takes away a little bit of that kind of fun, light feeling. I think there's yeah. just so much pressure right now. Yeah. For but you know, when I work with girls, fitness girls, I'm trying to explain them, be nice to everyone, yeah. you know, especially when you're backstage, because when you uh, give some help or good energy to your competitor, mm -hmm. to girl who you compete against, uh, this energy will help you to perform. Yeah. I promise you. But when you're not sharing, when yeah. you just close off and when you put negative energy around, this is not going to help you to perform because you closed. Mm -hmm. You have to be open. Yeah. You have to be open to people who work backstage, yeah. to be ni nice to them, you know, who work for you every, like, f from the morning yeah. till the end. You do your routine, you left, but yeah. they staying there, you know, just to be nice. And mm -hmm. all this, yeah. I promise you, will help you to yeah. do best job on stage because these people will support you. They yeah. know how good you are. You are a good person. You're not playing to be a good right. person. No, you, you actually are. are. Yes. Yeah. And they support you. Yeah. So, but when you, you know, I mean, I know what you're talking about. I know this is difficult for most of girls and uh, because mm -hmm. I know a lot of girls stress out, really stress out. Right. Uh, well, you have to find a way still to relax, breathe or some uh, exercises, yeah. you know, or talk with maybe psychologists because they're also helping some girls, yeah. you know, to get through this. Yes, it, it is difficult, but trust me, if you try once to be 
open, yeah, you'll 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 see the difference. And we talked about this too. It's kind of like letting go of that pressure to have to win. Yes. Opens mm -hmm. you up to be able to have that yes. aura about you, where you're yeah. you're focusing on your relationships and everything because you've prepared. Yes. You feel like you've done everything you possibly can, yeah. and you let kind of just the results just it's, happen. It's so easy. Let's just yeah. remember your first competition. You did not expect yeah. anything, right? You did not. You definitely did not expect to win, right? You just don't know what it is. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And you just do it, you want to have fun, you want to yeah. try it, you want it so badly. And result is always right. the best. I, I, pro I probably uh, write that you won the show. <laughs> like everyone who was like first show, they, yeah. they probably won the show. Yeah. And then, of course, this pressure and all other yeah. stuff, yeah. jealousy mm -hmm. or something. They all come up and they doesn't let you to be open up. They doesn't let you to progress. They doesn't let you to be who you are and show who you are to the audience because audience will love you, whoever you are. But if you true to yourself and they see it mm -hmm. on stage, they would love you and judges. Judges audience too. They mm -hmm. normal, real people, right? right? They're not robots. They absolutely human being and they can see it. Oh yeah, I believe that 100%. Yeah. I think you can feel how, energy yeah, how, from, the, from the judges. How many times you saw on stage when someone come, they playing this game and this yep. anger, like anger through, through the eyes. Absolutely. It's, Everyone can see it. You I cannot can see you it. cannot cheat the stage. Stage is the truth for 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 us, for audience. There's an energy. I believe yeah. this. You you walk on the stage and when you have this energy about you where you're truly connecting to the judges, you're truly giving a positive energy, people can feel it from like a mile away. Right, right. So yeah, and uh, sorry, I no, interrupt go ahead. you. Um, and that's why when I uh, work with girls, I always say, listen, don't think about placing. Mm. Because when you think about placing, you forgot to do the most important is your job. Yeah. What you're going to do on stage. Do this the, the best way. Yeah. Yeah. Because all in your head, oh my God, this girl is good. This girl is good. This girl, mm -hmm. how I'm going to, how they're going to, oh, first call out. Ah, bah, 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 bah. You know, yeah. this is, I could get crazy if I would think like this. This is, it's insane how, how some of girls thinking. Absolutely. First call out, not first call out, where I was in first call out, here, here, or here, you know, all this shag. It's just, it's, come on. It's you true. You need to perform. Yeah. You, how you can express yourself, how you can express your feelings if in your head is only numbers mm -hmm. and uh, only placing. And imagine yeah. if... If you not get this place that you expected to get, how frustrated are you going to be? Your life can be destroyed. After. I can't agree with you anymore. I mean, you're totally right. I do want to talk about something crazy that you did do. Uh -huh. And I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> you did something very crazy. And I always do crazy things. <laughs> and I actually found out about it because I saw you on TV. But you did America's Got Talent. Yes. What made you decide to do that? What went into that process? Uh, and tell us, tell me about the, the routine you performed. Uh, that was fun experience. Yeah. Absolutely different and amazing. Uh, my manager contacted me this. He said, Oksana, uh, Americans Got Talent saw your performance, Black Swan, on Point Shoes. Yes. They saw, saw your performance on YouTube and they wanted to invite you for the audition. I'm like, wow, really? I was like, okay, why not? I thought maybe why not? this would help, you know, to promote fitness uh, and show what fitness is, mm -hmm. you know, in bigger audi in audience that maybe doesn't know about mm -hmm. bodybuilding and fitness. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, I passed first audition, mm -hmm. they took me, and then live show, so yeah. live show, and I was, uh, it was, no, they record the show. Okay. And uh, I did my, like, you know, tutu, remember, right? And yes. like a pants, and I was in good shape. Yeah. So, and they said, um, producer said, uh, you have to change your pants. Like you have to put something uh, longer because you are too, <laughs> your body's it's too sexy. I'm like, what? come on, no way. I'm I see some of the things that they wear. That's I, 
What? Some, did you see some was naked at all? I'm like, no, no way. I I changed a little bit. <laughs> I made those, my pants bigger like That's this. That's crazy. But I said, no, I'm not gonna, you know, make this, this difference. This is my outfit. Yeah. Right. But this huge production and now I learned you better to listen yeah. whatever they told you to do. So I said, no, it's okay. I did great performance. I remember I got four yeses from judges, from Simon, uh, Howie, yeah. uh, Mel was yeah. there and uh, Heidi, Heidi. Yes. Uh, so I got four yeses. I was so excited, so happy. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And yes. then when they, when it was supposed to be live yeah uh my manager texted me and they, he said oksana they cut you <gasps> from this but you got the like, yeses uh-huh they said they cut you from this uh audition i'm like why why i don't know they didn't explain but they cut you you think it was because of your skirt i i, I don't know that's Maybe all you can think of because i said no <laughs> <laughs> because I said no to someone important. Oh my God. So, and uh, I, that was heartbroken. Oh. I was like, oh my God, because I was, I, I told so to you everyone, to my fans, to my parents, I'm like, mom, I'm We're setting be... the record straight right now. Yeah, you should have been on that final. Can you, can you imagine? No. And no me. <gasps> like I'm a liar. It looks <sighs> like I'm a liar. I wasn't there. That's you not, know? that's crazy. I'm like, oh my God. Okay. I passed this audition, right? Second yeah. audition. And they said, okay, you got to do next routine. Yeah. So next performance. And I did my black and white dress. Okay. This time I was more, more nice. <laughs> you wore a longer skirt? <laughs> yes. Okay. I was longer skirt. So I did my uh, performance and they show me yeah. on TV. I was like, wow. And the next one was judges cut. Okay. So after judges cut, uh, it's it's going uh, like live in on Hollywood. Remember uh -huh. on Hollywood, so with audience. I was like, oh, I hoping to get it, but I didn't know what to do, like what to do next. Yeah. So because my routine is basically kind of the same, I didn't yes. know what to make. It's like more fun. So and then on judges cut, they cut me. So from free free uh, acts, they left just one. Okay, so got it. The boss of us was cut. Well, but, I think you should have been on there. I think yeah. it should have been on there. And you know what's cool is you have you have a son on the way. How uh, yes, far out are you? Yes, uh, almost four months. Okay, almost so almost four months. And your son yeah. is gonna be able to see all of these things that you've done. Oh gosh, Wendy, it's Isn't it's that just awesome? so sensitive. Yeah, we don't know. Like it's I don't know. It's can just, you imagine? Still can't. I still can't imagine. Like every time Boris see me with this stomach and he's like, oh my God, wow, you're going to be mom. Do you, you have can... any goals for what you, what you want your son to do? Mm -mm. You want no, him to, I let you him know, decide. It's total up That works to for him. you, right? Yes. Total. And Boris, he's agree with me. It's total up to him. He going to be independent. Um, yes, of course, we parent, we're going to help him yeah. if he has any question, I'm sure he will. But again, it's hard to say because uh, it's... <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> we still want to enjoy time just like to how to become a parents. It's... So this is your, you're getting ready to enter your next chapter. You've, you've had several chapters in your life, right? Yes. I can't yeah. even imagine all the things that you've done in your life up to this point. And you're still young. You still have more <laughs> ahead you. of you. I Thank mean, there's you. still so That's much. so funny, you know, because in Russia, it's a total different story. In mm -hmm. Russia, I'm, I'm a hero. Can you imagine? Because I got pregnant at 45. You, hero. You're a hero. <laughs> Because but you're a Russia, hero here too, though. No, here you're like, a hero. <laughs> you are a hero. I mean, in the United States, nobody uh, like uh, uh, surprise. Yeah, like no. surprise, surprise. You yeah. know, in Russia, when I wasn't, when I announced that I'm pregnant mm -hmm. to my friends, they was like, what? They couldn't even be happy. They couldn't even be happy because it was shock for them. At oh my 45, gosh. I'm like, I look at him, I'm like, oh my God, what are you talking about me behind this scene, <laughs> behind all this, you know? Oh my it's gosh. Because stereotypes, all the stereotypes, stereotypes. In, stereotypes in Russia, like you got to get uh, pregnant at 23, wow. uh, 25, yeah. you know, 29, it's 
late already. It's you know? changing here. Like it used to be that it used way. To be here. Uh huh. And it's recently it's started to change. It, more. I think it's changing there too. Yeah, a little definitely. Bit, but still, yeah. all the stereotypes are there. Yeah. Like wow. So I'm glad I changed it. I changed the you, stereotypes. You're, you single-handedly, <laughs> you're changing the stereotypes. I broke the rules. <laughs> broke, the, broke the rules. So looking back at everything that you've done and looking forward to your next chapter, uh, here you know, we're talking about you making your mark on the world, on the fitness industry. Uh, what would you say, in, if you were to look back, how would you like to be remembered and how would you like to explain like how you've made your mark on the world on the world yeah. or on our fitness the industry. world oh wow mm, nothing i can do i i don't know mm. nothing you can't do mm -hmm. if we talk about the world being in living in today's world mm -hmm. uh, I just realized that nothing depends on us. <laughs> there is nothing. All we can do is just focus on our life, focus mm -hmm. to do on our family, mm -hmm. focus uh, on what exactly on your dream. Mm -hmm. But something like if if I understand your mm -hmm. question right, yeah. like if we want to change worldwide something, unfortunately, we just audience who can watch and see what. In the fitness what industry. government does with us, you yeah. know, that's that's all. But we can change our world, small world. In like, the fitness industry, mm -hmm. what would you say people would remember you as? Uh, I don't know. I wanted, uh, of course, if people would remember my stories that I uh, I did on stage. Mm -hmm. maybe my creativity and uh, you know it's hard to say that I wish they would know me as a person uh, because I didn't speak English when I started to compete so and it, of course it's obviously it's hard mm -hmm. it's hard to communicate with someone when you don't speak English and how they can know you who mm -hmm. you are right uh, I wanted to them to know but Hopefully, through my performances, they um, get to know me better as a person a little. <laughs> I yeah. think that there, there are so many things that we could say about you, Oksana. I think just, <laughs> just, your, just your kind spirit, your kind soul, uh, showing that being a champion doesn't mean that you have to be so ruthless and angry and 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 protective of that. That is the only person who we can be angry with. It's ourselves. Ourself. That's it. Yeah. Because everything, uh, it's up it's up to us. Mm -hmm. So it probably that's how we can change mm -hmm. the world. Just start to look at yourself. Mm -hmm. Start to look your own world uh, yeah. and change it in a better way. And maybe other people would like your mm -hmm. world and they would yeah. it's, come. It is, it is crazy that a lot of that came from within. Um, I think that it can happen two ways. I think that it either comes from within, like with you, it was just natural for you to want something that was hard. If it's, mm -hmm. it was hard for you, you wanted it more, right? I think that the second way that that can be done is if, it, if that, that doesn't come naturally for somebody, I think it can be trained. Don't you yes, think? Yes, absolutely. By watching somebody like you overcome things and watching someone like you fight for things that you want that maybe aren't don't come oh, easy. Absolutely, if, Wendy. I've seen so many talented people mm -hmm. in gymnastics, so many talented people in bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. you, I'm sure you saw. Yes. Uh, so many talented actors in Hollywood. Yes. Talent is incredible, yes. but they. They doesn't they doesn't want it. They doesn't need it. And someone who work hard yeah. and who really want it, they beat them. Totally. Yes. Man, Oksana, you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for just shining your light, oh, shining your you. spirit and your soul. Um, I, I don't, I think a lot of people would say Oksana is, is this superhuman. She's probably <laughs> going to have this baby and then she's going to come back and, and go for her sixth <laughs> title. 
but but we oh will see. We'll, we'll, I'm gonna deliver right now. I'm not gonna <laughs> to get ready for Olympia this year. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you make that decision right now. But I will say, as a fan and as your friend, I yes. would say it would be awesome to see you back on stage. But I also know that you do have another chapter that you're getting ready to start, and I'm rooting for you on that chapter. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I this is absolutely amazing. Uh, opportunity to yes. talk to you finally I know uh, and especially for wolf uh, pack yes. it's amazing uh, it's general um, sponsor for Olympia right yes. I'm, yes yes this is absolutely amazing I know how much it means for the athlete and for yes. uh, producers but yeah actually it was Boris <laughs> was talk about it you haven't been masters Olympia yet <laughs> like what? You yeah. have one more. You have one more to go. Olympia. Yes, and uh, right now, of course, we focus on um, on uh, pregnancy, yes. uh, and it's totally new experience uh, that we will. You don't know about this experience yet. We don't know nothing. Yeah. We don't know anything. Like I was just asking to my mom how yeah. it is. I, I remember I was. Um, uh, how to say, carrying my mm -hmm. my sister when I was young. But yeah, this is absolutely new experience. And mm -hmm. uh, all moms who compete in fitness mm -hmm. and figure and bodybuilding, now it just it's just so inspiring me. Yeah. You know, I'm look at I look at them and just amazing the shapes, how they become in shape yeah. after. I think this is the next step. This is just so interesting how you can become in shape after deliver the baby. You I, know? I think I'm with you. Anything is possible. I think. I think so. If you, <laughs> whatever you decide, mean, whatever you just, decide to do, it's gonna happen. So <laughs> all it takes for you is just to decide this is what I want or this is what I don't want. Whatever it is, Oksana, you're going to make it happen. Whatever you, whatever you decide to do. And we're, Thank you. we're rooting for you on that, on that chapter. Thank you so much. I, this is, you know, this is my family. I yes. was, I almost grew up here. Like uh, yeah. in IFBB, when I came with nothing, absolutely with nothing, no language, nothing. And that's how I start to speak. And that's, that's the family. Yeah. And having baby now, like uh, being pregnant, it's like, you feel like it's a, it's a new yeah. member of our family, yes. you know, the whole family. This is exciting, very exciting. Well, once, once you have your son, we may have to bring you back and have another interview. <laughs> And have an update and see where you're at. This little so. one. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aksana. This has you. been so great. Thank you so much for having me.